Welcome back to today's program. On this episode, we are talking the stimulus bill packages and hyperinflation. So hyperinflation, meaning that the value of products and or services will dramatically increase or the value of money will decrease. So what are the chances that all of these bills that the Congress, the government is passing, all of this money that they're shoving back into the economy, that it will in fact cause inflation or even worse, hyperinflation? What are the things that primarily cause it? Well, it's one of two things. It's either either an oversupply of money or velocity of money. Now, velocity of money is the speed at which individuals or consumers will spend their money because they believe that the value of products or goods are going to increase very soon. It's unlikely if there is any hyperinflation due to this that it will be caused by velocity of money. The more likely scenario is that it would be due to an oversupply of money. I mean, in fact, the government just passed a $2.3 trillion bill, and they're looking to pass something that might be similarly priced at $2.3 trillion. Isn't that too much money to be flooding into the economy, oversupplying it, and then therefore causing hyperinflation? Some people will say, no, that won't occur because the government is doing it via taking on debt. But that is really a fallacious argument because although they are taking on debt, the money is still being supplied into the economy regardless. However, they are doing this at the right time. If there was a time for the government to spend trillions of dollars without causing hyperinflation, it would be during a situation like this. Right here are all the stimulus bills that have been passed and the final one that's really being proposed right now. You can see that the cost of all these combined, depending on the final phase five stimulus package, and we'll call it phase five because technically it is, is between three to six trillion dollars. That is an abundant supply of money back into the economy. But something really crazy and really important just happened that's going to prevent hyperinflation, even as the government is supplying all this money back into the economy. To highlight this, let's look at the value of the United States stock market before and after the shutdown. Before the shutdown, the United States stock market was valued at around $37.3 trillion. After the shutdown, it's hovering back up and down, but at an average of $26 trillion. So what happened in just the stock market alone was that $11 trillion worth of money or money supply was taken out of the U.S. economy. But let's get a little bigger because the stock market is not the only supply of value and money in the United States. What about the entirety of the U.S. economy? I'm talking everything, every house, every business, GDP, all the military. The entire value of the U.S. economy was around $270 trillion. Many economists have calculated that this shutdown has caused a 25% decrease in the entire value of the U.S. economy, bringing us right now at an average of $202 trillion. That means that we have lost $68 trillion of money supply or value in the economy. Now, of course, this is not accounting real money supply or exchange of money, but just the entirety of the U.S. economy. What I'm trying to show you right now now is that the supply of money, which is one of the major factors of hyperinflation, is in fact lower right now. We are really in a deflationary cycle. So if you have somebody out there sharing with you, we are seeing deflation, not inflation, they are technically telling you the truth. However, that's not the whole story. If the United States passes another phase five stimulus package, let's just say it costs $3 trillion, that means the government would have then spent around $6 trillion in stimulus packages. Now taking our hurt economic system down to $202 trillion to $208 trillion. Well, that doesn't seem too bad. We're still $62 trillion worth of supply away from where we were four months ago. We should still be deflationary. Yes. However, there's a little thing called a rebound. And the rebound is what we're all looking for, right? We want businesses to pop up, GDP to go back up, employment, everything to funnel back to where it was four months ago. Yet that could be the very thing that could cause the inflation that we're worried about. Imagine with me after all these stimulus packages, we all get back to work and everything rebounds to where it was four months ago. That would mean that the economy would rebound $68 trillion, the entirety of the U.S. economy. Plus, we would now have this $6 trillion stimulus infusion of money into the economy, bringing the total supply up to $276 trillion, which is now $6 trillion more than it was four months ago. Plus, $6 trillion of it is now artificial 
which is not a good thing. That's where you start to get your bubbles, like your housing bubble or your credit bubble, when you have value within an economy that really shouldn't be there. So a full rebound after the stimulus and after getting back to work would not really be a good thing. Even in this scenario, though, I don't think we would see hyperinflation. We would probably see some sort of inflation, but not hyperinflation. The better outcome for us to be after the stimulus package is done and everyone gets back to work is that we would not see a full rebound. And in fact, the full rebound is highly unlikely. What's more likely after all these stimulus bills are passed and everyone gets back to normalcy, we'll probably see something like this, a $60 trillion rebound along with $6 trillion worth of stimulus, bringing the total value of the US economic system to $268 trillion, which will still be $2 trillion less than it was four months ago, meaning we miss out on hyperinflation. Now, of course, that $6 trillion is still artificial, hence the name stimulus. And it's something that does need to be paid back. Remember, this is not an exhaustive look at all the implications of what's going on here. There could be some economic slowdown because of this. There could be higher taxes because of this in the future and some other undue burdens that are unforeseen or will need to be dealt with at a later time. However, hyperinflation is unlikely to be one of the issues we're going to face. So does that mean that we could spend anything we want right now? The answer is no, obviously, because if you consider what I've been saying about the rebound effect, the more money the government does spend, the more more likely it is to see inflation after the rebound occurs. So if the government just haphazardly spent $20 trillion on whatever dreams they could come up with, the rebound would almost certainly cause inflation or possibly hyperinflation at that time. So how much more money can the government spend safely? Well, I'm not an economist, but in my opinion, I think they would be surely safe at spending around $3 trillion more without the fear of seeing hyperinflation. And as time goes on, as years go on in the future, that likelihood would become less and less. A good example of that would be all the debt that we've taken on in this country, say 50 or 60 years ago. The debt we took on then is minuscule to what we would compare to as a problem nowadays. Something that was 100 or 200 or 300 billion dollars in the 1950s seems like nothing now. $2 trillion 50 years from now will seem the same. So as time goes on, the likelihood of hyperinflation, especially in a large and complicated economic system like the United States of America, will become less and less. Now, the next statement I'm going to say is not to be harsh, but to be realistic. Because we're not going to see a full rebound, that means that we need to have economic loss somewhere. And the best place to see that economic loss is in those areas of our economy that were weak. If there were businesses that were not operating correctly or corporations that were not fiscally responsible, it would be the right thing for a number of those places to shut down. Now, yes, there's a lot of individuals that would work in those locations, and hopefully they can find positions in stronger, better run companies. It would not be a good thing if the government fully supported every single business regardless of their health. I know that they didn't ask for this situation. Nobody did. But if there are weak spots in our economy, now is the time to let those weak spots die and let stronger spots take over. That effectively will help protect us from hyperinflation. Artificially supporting every single business company and corporation would be a mistake because then you would artificially allow the rebound to go back to its full effect plus the possible $6 trillion of stimulus, and that would cause a worse situation. So that's my thoughts on it. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope it helps a little bit. Remember, this is not an exhaustive look at it. There is a lot more factors than what I am giving you. This is just to show you that hyperinflation is highly unlikely in the situation we find ourselves in. As always, if you enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. We would love to have you come along with us. We will catch you next time.